This is a British PCR2 receiver that I picked up a couple of years back at the Hamvention. Uh, it's kind of an interesting box. It uh, does uh, both long wave, medium wave, and short wave uh, AM. It's really intended for broadcast more than anything else. It gives you an idea of the construction that's in there. It's a pretty straightforward design and oddly had all good capacitors in it. In order to use the receiver, uh, I decided I had to do a couple modifications to it. So uh, I installed an AC power supply and a uh, new power on switch and some things like that. You can see the new plug for the AC supply and the power switch on the front of the radio. And inside the radio, there was plenty of space. So uh, you can see the, the new black transformer and the tube next to it. This is the rectifier tube for it. Uh, oddly, they had a, a hole for a tube socket right next to where that was. So I didn't have to put a hole in the chassis. This is looking at it from underneath. You can see some of the new wiring on top of the existing circuitry that's already in the radio. This was the chassis before I did anything, and you could see the hole that was already there along with the two transformers. We turn the radio on. And also on the front of the radio, you have a band switch to select uh, medium wave, long wave, or short wave. You're being tuning control. And a tone switch. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, pretty soon we're going to have more people... Close up the tuning dial. Kind of interesting thing about the tuning dial is the shortwave band on the top is calibrated in megahertz. And the medium wave and long wave broadcast bands are both calibrated in meters. Changing tax laws, shifting markets. Looking inside the radio, you can see the first RF amplifier, the tube down in the lower right, the uh, mixer oscillator, two IF amplifiers, detector, first audio amp and audio output tube, along with the uh, rectifier tube and power transformer, and the two open frame transformers. One's a B-plus choke, and the other is the audio output choke. One of the things that really attracted me to this receiver is the primitive tubes they use in it. Uh, they're really nice big glass bottles. You hear a uh, ham radio and, station uh, on uh, 40 meters here. And they did make a sideband generator for it. I think you said you, uh, you, you don't have one. Of course, they have a 50. Tune up the band a little bit. Great It's a uh, AM only receiver. It has no BFO. Really intended more for broadcast than anything else. Wave is too expensive, even in a crisis situation, but he doesn't buy it. Assume $100 per hour is your incremental cost to increase programming. And it probably wouldn't be that much, he said. And assume you're going to add two hours per day of crisis programming. That's $73,000 per year. Well, during my tenure, Gerhard said, the USAGM budget was around 700. The radio's been kind of a fun project, building the AC power supply, getting everything working and cleaned up and the like. But uh, it's not one that I'm really interested in keeping long term. So if you like this radio, you're interested in it, go ahead and try contacting me and... Uh, Maybe we could work something out. I think I have probably a little over $200 US invested in this right now. And can be talked out of it. 
so I would look forward to hearing from you.